Have you gone through some sort of loss or trauma recently or even experienced the death of a close one? It seems like I've been hearing left and right about trauma and about uh, loss and accidents and I've been to a lot of uh, memorials. And then I just realized that I've been reading two books recently that kind of go together. If you're needing a spiritual approach, while well, above bites me, excuse me, a spiritual approach to recovering from loss, then there is one book that I might recommend for you called Theo's Heart, written by a friend of mine and a at least twice published author. And then the other one is part of a book club that I am in. Uh, the book is The Body Keeps the Score, and this one was published about 10 years ago by a, I think he's a Norwegian uh, psychiatrist. Now, uh, they could be read in tandem. The Body Keeps the Score is more a scientific approach to treating trauma, and it just astounds me. Uh, I, I've been reading it not only because I wanted to go to the, the uh, in-person book club, which by the way is being held by Jacqueline Fiore and it is part of Meetup. So I will post that in the details of this video. Uh, I wanted to not only read it for the book club, but also to relate to people more because it seems like I meet more and more people who have experienced some kind of trauma in their life, whether it is PTSD, whether it is sexual abuse, you name it, they probably cover it in here. Plus, I had a, a, I was in a car accident or a car crash in uh, last November, which was traumatic in itself. Thankfully, I'm alive, and it just made me realize how many shocking events people go through. What I didn't know is how your body responds to it, and that's what this blue book is about. That's why they call it the body keeps the score. The body remembers what you've gone through. Now, let me go somewhat quickly through The Body Keeps the Score. It's uh, by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. It looks like van der Kolk, but it's, I think, van der Kolk. I'm going to read a part to you about physical healing, because he was talking about how not, uh, talk therapy does not always help those who've gone through trauma, especially if their body has shut down as a result of experiencing it. It makes sense. It's it's like when your body is trying to escape pain or violence that it doesn't allow you to feel certain things anymore. If you are around people who are completely numb to relationships or show no expression for their emotions, who knows, they might have gone through trauma. So he's describing one of his patients. Uh, he was saying, while Sherry dutifully came to every appointment and answered my questions with great sincerity, I did not feel we were making the sort of vital connection that is necessary for therapy to work. Struck by how frozen and uptight she was, I suggested that she see Liz, a massage therapist I had worked with previously. During their first meeting, Liz positioned Sherry on the massage table, then moved to the end of the table and gently held Sherry's feet. Lying there with her eyes closed, Sherry suddenly yelled in a panic, Where are you? Somehow Sherry had lost track of Liz, even though Liz was right there with her hands on Sherry's feet. Sherry was one of the first patients who taught me about the extreme disconnection from the body that so many people with histories of trauma and neglect experience. I discovered that my professional training, with its focus on understanding and insight, had largely ignored the relevance of the living, breathing body, the foundation of ourselves. Sherry knew that picking her skin was a destructive thing to do, that's she picked her skin, and that it was related to her mother's neglect but understanding the source of the impulse made no difference in helping her control it. You also hear, or you see images in this book on how the brain looks when it is exposed to even, uh, how should we say, reenacted trauma, like uh, 
one of the I think, therapists who was working with these patients had gotten down their account of whatever incident had happened. And then while they were in this uh, MRI machine, she had read their passage, their own words, to her while they were there having their brains examined. And they could tell that despite this not being the actual event, because it had happened years before, just the re-experiencing re of the event by listening to their own words triggered the same brain response that they had had when the, the, when the accident was actually happening. For example, uh, one of them, you could see that the part of the brain that lets you speak, was there was no activity. She couldn't have spoken even if she had wanted to. And the other person, for example, their, their pulse went uh, skyrocketed. And then, uh, so it was for different for different people, but you could tell just re-listening to their account of what had happened, put them right back to that event. And the sad thing is that people who are traumatized often cannot separate truth from breaks in it so that the minute they're in panic mode, they can't get out of panic mode. And sometimes they look for being in a panic mode because it's the only way that they can feel like they're alive. They are possibly so numbed out that the only way they can feel things is if they seek events that trigger violence, for example. But read the book, it's really interesting. It's a bit uh, technical, word heavy, but it's still really interesting. Now for the Theo's Heart book. This is about, it, I haven't read the whole thing, but it's essentially about someone who got in a car accident. So this is fiction. It's really well written in terms of really detailed. But here, let me read some of it too. So if you are wanting something spiritual and relationship oriented and not so about science, then Theo's heart could be for you. This one is by Michelle Romano. This is the prologue. I never heard the sound of the crash, but there must have been one. Blinkers flashed in all directions, illuminating cars crushed like soda cans. The air was thick with smoke and the stench of engine oil and gasoline burned into my lungs. My heart raced as I scanned the scene in horror. I shuddered. It was eerily quiet. Through the haze, I saw a figure pull a man and a woman from their cars and lay them on the ground. Afterward, the hero came toward me. When he got closer, two wings fanned out from his body. Before I understood what had happened, he dis disappeared into thin air. Was that an angel? Frantically, I patted my front, back, and side pockets, searching for my cell phone. It wasn't there. My stomach dropped, and beads of sweat dripped from my forehead, stinging my eyes on my, as my head spun. I need to help these people! I tried to run to them, but my feet were cemented to the ground. My chest tightened. Help! My eyes darted to the woman lying on the ground. On the road, sorry. She had long, wavy brown hair, just like me. God, please help her. Then something, or someone, came toward me in slow motion. And for the rest, go to Amazon.com to get Theo's heart. I'll put more information about the meetup for the book club and for the Amazon for Theo's Heart in the description. An incredible read for both of them and I haven't even finished. Thanks and please send this to someone who has been experiencing some trauma or some form of loss. I appreciate you.